Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to part two of the rebuild for the swing device on this excavator, 1996 Hitachi EX120-2. If you missed part one, I'll put a link somewhere around here. Otherwise, let's get to it. Okay, I'm cleaning everything up right now. A couple of things I noticed. One, so this is the case on the seal. It goes on the bottom. And clearly, I am not the first person to be in here. If you can see that huge divot, that was not me. So this pipe right here, the threads, I don't know what happened. They're completely gone. So what they had on before was like some kind of garden hose that went over the top, but that should work. Not this, I'll get an actual pipe, but Microfiber rag, so it should be lint free. We're in shorts today because it's about 100 degrees and I'm doing all clean stuff so I don't really have to worry about getting grease all over the place. I'm pretty clean. <clears throat> Keep the dust off that for now. Things are already pretty clean. Still parts of old O-ring stuck to here. So I got the seal kit, but it's got about 8,000 more O-rings that I remember pulling out of here. So I guess you just gotta kinda fit to what you want. Of course, none of my tools are clean. Go ahead and clean these off real quick. and the letters go out. Is it this one? Or this one? It's gotta be this one. Yeah, it's the wrong one. So I know an O-ring goes in here. There was three different sizes. Or actually, there's there's two different sizes, two of one and one of the other. I think, let's see, that one's small. This might be it here. I think that one's correct, maybe. Let's see if we can get it in here. Pretty sure this is the right size one. What's this gonna do? Actually, I'm wrong. I thought it went in this groove right here, but I think that's for the snap ring. 
it goes right here and this fits really well. Manual says to put Loctite in here. And this probably goes like this, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's, it's all rubber. So I can just pretty much push it in by hand. I need to wash my hands again. Ow. There we go. Well, that's a good sign. take a break for a while so everything that's clean I can keep the dust off of and hopefully no mice crawl in here tonight This is the shim. There's two thicker ones, but I think these are for something else. Looks like someone flipped this ring before because it's worn on both sides. There's some teeth missing here. It says for lubrication purposes. So I should probably maybe line those up. Okay, so there's a slight amount of wear here. Well, not really wear, it's just kind of the polish is rubbed off. So that must be where those go. Oh my gosh, if this doesn't fall apart, it'd be a miracle. Oh, we got it. I might have gotten it. Oh, there we go. Well, seated on there. So it says uh, it should be 12 millimeters from here to the housing. That's how you know it's centered. That's about right. I think we got that. This one's got a lot of residue on it. I should probably clean that up a little more. Okay, now to figure out which O-ring. So I need two of these, one of these, one of these. Nope. Oh, that might be it right there. Nope. I don't know if you can see this, but there's grooves for two O-rings. I'm guessing these are the two that are the same size. Let me lube these up a little bit. Huh? 
It looks like it could be right. I think you do this one next. I didn't really pay attention to any of this stuff when I took it apart. Okay. So it shows them going on like this. There we go. There's another O-ring groove in here. Never really took this stuff apart. Let's come out. Right. Let's bring in a ball. Usually if there's any crud, it accumulates in stuff like this. Anything in here? I think I saw something I missed in here. Oh yeah, these things. Yeah. So I was just blowing this out and actually some crud did come out of both of these. There was a wire brush bristle in one of them that popped out into my hand. Okay. The rebuild kit didn't come with new O-rings for all the, any of the valves, but fortunately they're just standard metric O-rings. A hundred foot-pounds? I'm gonna have to do that once it's all back together, I guess. There's a washer on the other side. We got springs. It'd be easier to just do this without the valve in there first. Seated in there, right? Uh oh, that O ring just keeps popping out. I got to push it down once. There we go. All right, come on. Uh, yeah. Pretty sure both of those O-rings got seated okay. Guess we'll find out when we fire this thing up. Okay, I'm not missing any springs. Now it says to install this oil port surface, 
position toward cylinder block. What does that mean? I just checked the video where I took this apart. This side definitely goes that way. It says to put grease on here, probably to make it stick, but it's, it sticks on there pretty good with hydraulic fluid. Okay. Nope. Okay, well, hopefully this works without falling apart. I think this plate kind of missed it before, but there's a dowel on here. There's a dowel hole in this plate. It doesn't go all the way through, but I'm pretty sure you got to align that. So it makes sense to have it on here, doesn't it? I think I just misread the directions on that part because that makes a lot more sense. Easy, easy, oh, there we go. didn't seem too bad. I guess it all depends on if it works or not. It does say to pre-fill this thing with oil, which I'll do here, which would make sense. You don't want to start it up dry. I think you're supposed to tighten these to about 90 foot-pounds. I'll do that once it's back on the main thing, but let's tighten these down for now. Last thing as far as hydraulics go are these relief valves. This one had a uh, torn up o-ring on it. I'm gonna have to be really careful because they have these backings on them, these little plastic things, and I don't have replacements for those. I didn't get O-rings or these in the rebuild kit. So, they, I mean, you can take them off. They're not brittle or anything, but I just gotta be very careful with them. So the manual says to measure the distance from right here, the end of the, they call it the body, to the bolt end. Basically what you do is you screw this nut in and it pushes against this plunger and the spring and sets the pressure or I guess here from here, because this looks like it's all part of the same thing. So I think that's about 265 thou, pretty much right on the money. 1.5 millimeter. Just gonna shoot out of here. Okay. This is actually going to be a lot easier than I thought because there's really nothing inside of here. It's just that this is the, you know, this sets the spring pressure and the relief pressure, I'm assuming. So I just clean this out and uh, I don't have to take any of this stuff off. I don't have to worry about remeasuring anything. All right, good. Big. Easy. There we go. Okay, now for the hard part. Look 
Put that on there, right? Yeah. Okay, well, that's pretty much it for the swing motor. I did put some fluid in here. This red zip tie will hopefully remind me I need to retorque all these mounting bolts and these two valves. Plus, I'll probably have to retorque these. Once it's in the machine, it'll be a lot easier to do that. I do have one regret with a mistake I think I made when I did this. I'll just share it real quick. Um, if you saw the last video, you know that all these little pistons fell out when I was taking it apart and I couldn't track which hole they went into the cylinder block. The manual doesn't say you need to track that. And a couple people said it doesn't matter. Of course, a couple other people said it does matter. I did mic out all this stuff and it's all within spec. And I also like put my finger over the shoe here and then my finger on the other side of the cylinder block and each individual piston would pull a vacuum in each individual port. So I'm sure it's gonna be fine. Just little things like that bug me. And it's kind of just like a best practices thing, right? You wanna keep those together, but oh well. All right, now for the gearbox. So if you remember these gears, and these had just a little bit of corrosion on them from sitting for so long. Fortunately, where the actual rollers sit, it's pretty clean. Okay, now I got a gray pad. It's a little bit finer, just to uh, polish it up a little bit. New bearings. Oh, it came with new spring pins. Yeah, it's an improvement. Actually, I see a problem and I'm kicking myself that I didn't look at this step closer before. Um, yeah, I mean, you can see that wear ring right there. And that's from a gear, it looks like. It fits perfectly in there. I think that's a problem. So the gear's fine, but that's, that's probably not. Maybe I should put it together real quick and see. Okay, so we got a good one here. So I don't think the play back and forth is an issue, but it's gonna be spinning right up against this metal and the oiling groove is gone. So it's gonna be direct metal on metal and it's just gonna be grinding this thing down even more. It sucks, I'm gonna have to order one other one of these. It just means a few more days delay, but you know, it's just, it ain't, I, I don't want to reuse this part. Skipping ahead to the propeller shaft here. I showed this in the last video, but this is the sealing surface for the oil seal. So I got a brand new one of those. I think it was like $180, $190, but it's a uh, brand new condition. This is the upper bearing. This one's a little bit different than the original. It's got this oiling groove in here. The original one did not have that. This one is a NTN bearing, which is a Japanese bearing. And for both of the new bearings, I just matched up the trade number. And these are uh, FAGs. I can't say that out loud or my channel will get demonetized. So for the large bearing that I cut off, I found one on eBay. So this is the same trade number, but it's a different suffix as well. And really the only difference I can tell is it also has this oiling groove in the back, which shouldn't really matter. It has been sitting on a shelf for a while, so there's some like surface rust, which I'll clean up in a second. Both of these made in the USA. This one has a bronze retainer, if you can see it in there, versus the original just had a plastic retainer like that. I got it for 50 bucks too, like a really a real steal because the new one from Deer was I think 200 something. These are all rinsed out with mineral spirits. All 
All right, I got some genuine Hitachi and deer O-rings for this part. As far as I know, you can't get Hitachi parts around these parts. You have to go through the deer dealership, but those are really old ones I got off eBay, but they still look good. Wash my hands. Oh, that's better. Ooh. There we go. This one's probably going to take the press. Maybe I should heat this one up. That'd probably make it a lot easier if I just heat it up. Had to get a bigger pan to fit this, this thing. $7. Basically, we don't want to overheat the bearing, so I warm it up in oil and you don't want the bearing to touch the bottom because the flame will heat the whole thing up way, way too hot on the bottom, so. That's a good temperature. Kind of let it sit here for a while. Here we go. Just make sure these aren't going to melt. Oh, geez. I didn't, I didn't think this through. Okay. You could also do this in the oven. I've done it before in my trailer oven, but my trailer's parked at the house right now. I'm in the shop. And this oil, I'm not gonna toss. I'm gonna actually just throw it back in. This is my like generic oil. It's a bunch of mixture of different kinds of motor oil and other stuff that I don't know what to do with, so. Supposed to slide on. Okay, it's probably a bad idea to be continuing hammering on here since this is all, I mean, it's, I'm basically hitting on the inner race when I hit here, and that's through the rollers, it's hitting the outer race. Not very efficient, and it's gonna break the bearing. So I think I'm just gonna switch over to gently, yeah, this is working, just tapping this in. Should have done this in the first place. There we go. I got a new seal here. These things were not cheap. I think it was 90 bucks for one. One thing I did notice though is it's, it's like a dual lip. So you can see the spring on that side and then there's a spring here. And I think that explains that mystery spring I found when I drained out the slough bearing area. I think the outside one broke off because I only found one spring on the original seal. 
even though it had the same kind of lip going on. This goes in here. The manual says to use three bond 1215 uh, inside of here to hold it, the seal in place. Since this is an exterior seal, it's going to be sitting outside like that so it doesn't fall out. I don't have three bond 1215, but um, there's like a cross reference guide on Permatech's site. They say use ultra gray. Every other website I found said use ultra gray, so I'll use a very thin coating of this. I mean, that would make sense if you want it like that, right? Yeah, it's flush. But the, I think this is the right one. Is the O-ring gonna pop out of here? Sure hope not. I'm gonna make sure it's not falling out. <laughs> it's the last thing we need. Okay, you're good. Now, I should probably replace these lock washers. I'm not really sure what's going on with these bolts. They're uh, a little bit different than all the other bolts on this device. They also have three markings on them, like they're a grade five SAE but they're metric, they're threaded as a metric. Uh, a lot of them are, let me find one here. Some of the threads are like this, they're bad. So I'm just gonna go ahead, and I can't get the lock washers off either, like they're completely stuck on here. So I'm gonna just replace it with a normal metric 8.8 and with a new lock washer and then Loctite. Torque spec's only five kilograms per foot, which, what is that? Oh, my bad, it was uh, kilogram meters, which is 36 foot pounds. I, w I don't know why they didn't give it Newton meters. I guess maybe if you're on a different planet, it'll torque in differently. Still spins. Yeah, it's starting to get heavy. <laughs> Here it is. Uh oh. There we go. Hey. Still spins, that's a good sign probably. Okay, well this thing's starting to get too heavy and it's gonna to be too hard to do the final assembly up here and move it, so move it now. Okay, back to the planetary. So I, I mentioned earlier that this was obviously worn away. So I ordered new ones and this is what came and this is like completely wrong. I mean, the thickness is off, the diameter's off, and there's no oil grooves. This is the second stage carrier uh, thrust washer and the diameter is correct for this, but it's like way thinner, no oil grooves. So I, I, I don't want to use that. The only thing I can think of is if I bend this tab the other way, uh, then it should be okay. Because what these tabs do, if you can see this, they sit in here to keep it from spinning. Uh, so if this was flipped around, this part that's not worn away on the inside won't, it'll still, you know, provide the correct spacing 
which probably isn't that important. Uh, but then this side will be like there's oiling grooves here. So this side will work for the, the gear. So I'll give that a shot. I'm not sure how that's going to work. This is either going to work okay or make things way worse. <laughs> Okay, that's all it took. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. It's definitely captured in there. This is number two. That's how I take them out. Oh, I forgot the bearing, jeez. What? Oh, that was the, okay. Phew. There we go. Just making sure that these little hooks are in the way they're supposed to be. Looks good. This is the secondary stage. Install these with the groove facing towards the gear. There we go. Forgot about this. I think I had an alignment mark on here. Uh, let's see. Yep, T. I think that's it right there. Right there. I think that's right. Drain plug. I'm gonna fill this ahead of time just in case there's leaks. It would be nice to know about it now. Okay, now for the test of does it turn? Ooh, it's nice and smooth. What a difference having oil in it makes.
it's gonna have to turn to get it lined up. Shoot. Oh, well, that took care of itself. Okay, last thing is the fill pipe here. So this was the original. I got this brass one to try. It's a little bit shorter, but first let's see if it fits. Oh yeah, that fits perfectly. I think this is gonna need a breather. It would make sense. It's a sealed gearbox otherwise. Uh, so I got this one. This is, I had this laying around. This is an engine breather. But I looked it up. It's a 40 micron filter inside. It should keep the water out and allow it to breathe, not blow the seal out the bottom. That'd be nice. Oh, that yeah, should match up pretty good. So either this was rethreaded as NPT or it's BSP and they're just really close. I don't really know much about BSP enough to comment on that. This is galvanized by the way, it's not stainless because this is brass. So I'm not going to tape this end because I want it to be, this is where you take it off to fill it since that'll kind of protect water from getting in here. If that makes sense. Okay, done. Now I need to find some place to put this where it won't get damaged for the next unknown amount of time. I guess I'm just going to end the video here. I'm not sure how long it's going to be. I feel like I didn't really do much, but it's been three weeks. I was out for a week with like a torn muscle in my leg, but well, that's going to do it for this video. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to see if the swing device is going to work for quite a while because there's a lot more work to do on this thing. I don't want to just slap it back in and try it because then all the water and the hydraulic fluid will get pushed back through it. So based on the amount of wear in the hydraulic portion of the swing device, I think it's a pretty safe bet to not get into the travel motors or the hydraulic pump itself yet. Um, I think those are probably going to be fine. They just need to have the water flush out of them. But there was minimal wear in the swing device, so I think it's going to be okay. So the plan for the next video is to rebuild the center joint and work on the engine. I have a lot of parts in for all that stuff and we'll just keep blazing through this thing. So anyways, thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll be back soon.